Hi, thank you, Michael. Um, so I'll be talking about the role of the therapist in this team. Um, as Jeannie and Michael mentioned, um, the therapist is one of the key players in this team. They'll be working with a variety of different organizations. Um, so the therapist in this model will consist of licensed clinicians or counselors who are supervised by licensed clinicians. They'll be coming from a variety of different types of organizations, um, some more traditional ones like mental health agencies and hospitals, social services, um, community health clinics, substance abuse organizations, as well as more non-traditional settings such as faith-based organizations and churches. Um, the therapist will be working with the team to engage the patient and the, and the family in their depression care. You all are experts in this. You all already know the context that their patients live in and the circumstances that they might be struggling with. And so you'll be bringing this to the table to help us figure out how to better do these assessments as well as to provide the contacts with the evidence-based uh, treatment. We'll also be providing toolkits that will help outline some of the intake assessments as well as the evidence-based treatment. And um, in this case, we've been using CBT and the specific program is the BRIGHT program, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the therapist will be working with the primary care providers, the care manager and the outreach workers to support the screening, the uh, education, which is very key in this process, um, helping to refer if the patient needs medication or if they need other types of services. Um, such as housing or um, financial assistance. They'll be, um, they'll be monitoring and symptom tracking, uh, symptom tracking, which is very key to CBT. It's helping the patients get the information that they need about their own symptoms and helping them see their process and their progress over the course of treatment. Um, the therapist will also be coordinating with the care manager to make sure that the patients get follow-up care once the, the CBT treatment is done. And, um, and also um, coordinating with the PC primary care managers around the medication management and follow up with the outreach workers. So um, in the assessment, uh, we would be doing things that you probably already do in your agencies, um, such as screening for depression. Um, we'll be using the PHQ, and we'll also be working with the therapists to help them um, assess for other comorbidities, such as anxiety, psychosis, substance abuse, so that they can get appropriate care if they need um, additional support. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for pointing that out. Um, so CBT refers to cognitive behavioral therapy, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, so the therapist will be um, will be very key in understanding the um, the stressors that the patient um, might be experiencing, so that they could follow up with the care manager um, or the outreach worker that might be supporting them. It would be also important for them to understand the barriers to care, which you know, so that they can understand what might interfere with the patient coming in for treatment and uh, problem solving around that. They'll also be uh, making recommendations to see if the patient needs uh, medication management or medication. Um, and then, you know, talking with the patient about their preference for treatment. Um, and then finally, they'll be coordinating here. So CBT, CBT refers to cognitive behavioral therapy. It's a model of therapy that was developed by Aaron Beck. Um, and it's based on this idea that thoughts, behaviors, and mood are interrelated. And the intervention targets thoughts and behaviors to improve depression. And so by thoughts, we mean um, the patient's perception of the world or patient's beliefs system, um, how they think about themselves, how they think about others, and how they think about the world and their future. Um, and by behaviors, we mean the activities that they do and the interactions that they have with people. And so those are the, the three areas that we work with in this program. The, one of the main techniques of CBT is cognitive restructuring, which refers to uh, a technique that teaches clients how to recognize dysfunctional thoughts or, um, or irrational thoughts or thoughts that might just be uh, distressing for them as well as cognitive errors um, and cognitive tendencies related to their schemas. So those schemas are their 
beliefs about themselves, their beliefs about the world, their beliefs about others that might cause them to feel um, worse about themselves or about their circumstances. The clients will also learn to engage in activities that improve their mood. And so what we would be working on with patients would be um, to help increase pleasant activities in their life, increase pleasure in their life, as well as support them in um, their goals, um, their short-term as well as long-term goals. <coughs> and then finally to improve relationships, so helping them deal with grief and loss, um, conflicts in their interrelation in their relationships with others. And um, so finally, you know, I think one of the most important things about the CBT is it's very concrete action. It's a very concrete um, approach that teaches people how to problem solve. It gives them skills and um, helps them develop a network of support. It's very practical. Um, it's also an approach that is um, fairly short term. About twelve. This program that we have is about twelve weeks long, and um, it's it's a process that really teaches patients how to become their own therapist. It makes the process very transparent, um, so they know what they're getting and they know how to solve things for themselves, so that they don't need the therapist anymore, and they can become a very, you know, they are and, and will be the, the leader within their own treatment team. Um, why do we want to use CBT? We want to use it because it has a very large evidence base. We know from research that it works and it prevents relapse, and also for ethnic minorities, this particular program that we're using has been well studied, uh, was developed by Jeannie and, and her colleagues at UCSF, and has been adapted and um, adapted for a variety of different populations, including substance abuse population. And um, so we, we really want to build on what we know works. It's a practical approach that teaches skills and um, teaches people how to have more adaptive thoughts and behaviors to improve their mood. And it's also um, an important intervention because we also know from from partners of care that the people who got therapy, CBT therapy, did better than those who got medication over the long term. Um, and I think that might have to do with, with teaching people skills so that they can improve their circumstances and develop the sort of network and support they need to continue to um, battle with their depression. Um, currently, there are probably very few agencies out in the community that have the resource and the training for CBT. Um, CBT often is provided in places like university settings and um, private practice where people have a little bit more resource to get that kind of training. And so we think it's really important that we work with the community to bring this out to the community. Um, it's something that, you know, especially in this current climate, is, um, is being more and more needed for reimbursements and grants. You know, there's a push to move towards evidence-based practice. And so um, this could be something very beneficial to agencies so that they can get more funding for themselves. Um, it's also something that's typically very costly. We know from the Aaron Beck Institute, um, or the Beck Institute, that several th it takes costs about several thousand dollars to get this kind of training. And so um, we're hoping that we'll be able to work with you all to bring this resource out to the community and adapt it for the needs of the community.